Hello, welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we get to chat with Al Bina from the Quincy Quarry and Granite Workers Museum. They've got a big event coming up tomorrow. We'll learn all about that. First, though, we check out the weather and the news for you this morning. Currently in Quincy, kind of cloudy out there. It's kind of breezy, too. 54 degrees right now. Could add a couple of degrees to that for a high later today. We've got showers uh, moving in. The wind's going to pick up as well later on this afternoon. So a windy, warm, and wet afternoon coming up today. It'll chill down quickly tonight. Look at that. Temperatures drop into the lower 30s. And then we've got a split weekend. I think tomorrow, definitely the pick. Lots of sunshine. Upper 40s for highs. More rain moves in here on Sunday with highs in the mid to upper 40s. But a pretty nice day on Monday with sun and clouds and a high Monday around 50 degrees. 54, cloudy in Quincy right now. In the news today, City of Quincy will be getting its very first Special Education Learning Center. The City Council this past week did approve a proposal to purchase the building at 180 Old Colony Avenue from Eastern Nazarene College and transform it into a center for students with special needs in grades pre-K all the way up through grade 8. Quincy's Director of Special Education, Erin Perkins, said the new center would be specifically tailored to the needs of students with autism and other special needs. So um, therapy for our students um, with autism is an extremely important part of the day in terms of speech therapy, occupational therapy, and physical therapy. So to have a dedicated therapy space for each of these neighborhoods, I, I think is, is just an unbelievable opportunity and um, just something that the students and the families will greatly benefit from. Um, in addition, there'll be student support um, staff that will be available at the, the Learning Center. So, of course, we, there would be a principal and a team administrator. Um, in addition, we'd have multiple guidance staff working at, within the Learning Center and located throughout the building um, so that we can help support the teachers as they and the students as they move through the day. A uh, psychologist would also be a part of the staff at the Learning Center. And then uh, really important to the program is what's called Board Certified Behavioral Analysts. And so those are um, experts um, in the field of autism and they help develop the individual children's programs um, and hopefully you know, design plans for their specific individual needs. Officials estimate at least 40 of the 150 students who are currently educated out of the city would utilize the new center, which could accommodate up to 300 students. Officials also say the new center would save the city $350,000 per year. The building will cost $6.8 million. It would need $1.7 million in renovations. The new center could be open by the summer of 2021. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch is hopeful that the City Council will approve the taking of four properties around the Quincy Police Station to create a new public safety complex. The mayor is seeking permission to acquire the Stop and Shop gas station, Father Bill's homeless shelter, and some other properties on Broad and Field Street to create the new complex and add a parking garage. And you look across the street, it's a disaster to look at. <laughs> uh, what an improvement this will be, and a lot of green around it. And I, as I mentioned in my presentation, a uh, whole corner park that will be dedicated to our first responders uh, right at that corner. So really balance out that beautiful other corner where the cemetery is. And, of course, we get the track on the third corner, mm -hmm. which is pretty handsome in itself. So uh, looking forward to, uh, to, to moving this forward and getting this done. I appreciate the council's uh, due diligence on this, and I understand these are, uh, you know, tough decisions. A lot of questions will be asked, and we'll get through that process. We'll provide all the answers necessary and hopefully they'll see the wisdom in this this project as well. Koch says the new complex would house the police station, the fire administration building and emergency management department. The land takings and design costs would total 32 million dollars. Mayor says he'll come back before the council to explain the total cost of the new building once those land takings are approved. Our finishing touches are being placed on the newly reopened Wollaston MBTA station this weekend. The T says the north section of the parking lot is closed today for repaving and that paving is also taking place at Greenwood and Woodbine streets adjacent to the station. Tomorrow, the intersection of Beale Street and Newport Avenue is scheduled for 
final paving. Now, the newly renovated station opened in August after a 20-month, $34 million project that made the station completely handicapped accessible. For the first time in its 37-year history, the Quincy Farmers Market will have a winter location. Board of License Commissioners recently approved a proposal to allow the market to open up inside the South Shore YMCA on Coddington Street from December 6th through February the 14th from 11.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Fridays. Now, the board's chairman, Nicole Crispo, says the market will be open to everyone. This is something that um, Janet Little has been looking to do for quite some time yeah. and has found a place. They're going to use the conference room oh, all right. at the Y. Okay. Uh, Dave McCarthy was there, Ward 1 counselor, mm -hmm. speaking in favor. Um, they have uh, a number of vendors. I can't remember hmm. if she said it was 50 vendors wow. or there's going to be a fish market, beef farmer, um, salts, honey, microgreens, bakers. It, it's going to be a great event, Amazing. I think, for, yeah. um, for them to um, work throughout the year. So I'm um, looking forward to that. Well, the market's director, Janet Little, is a member of the Y, and she thanked them for allowing the market to utilize their conference room for this new winter hours program. Well, now that you're up to date with weather and news, let's check out our programming lineup for you for later on today here on Quincy Access Television. It'll start with a replay of this program currently in Quincy at 5 o'clock. Then at 6 o'clock, join us for sound advice with attorney Tom Williams. Hello, folks. I am attorney Tom Williams, and welcome to Sound Advice. A new QNQ Sports Desk at 6.30 tonight on Channel 8. 7 o'clock, it's Quincy in focus. Navigate your financial future. This is episode one of a new program, 7.30 tonight. Then at 8 o'clock on AM Quincy, we'll learn about Interfaith Social Services Feed the Hungry Gala coming up in a couple of weeks. The recent QCAP Best Chef Fundraiser event at 8.30 tonight on Channel 8. Then at 9.30, the Schiller Boston Community Chorus Performance. And it's Democracy Now! tonight at 11. Please watch Channel 9 every day. You'll learn about Quincy City Department's different committee activities. It starts at 5.30 with Quincy in focus. Update DPW at 6 o'clock, all about the fall season. 6.30, FYI from the Quincy Health Department. Try to get over those holiday blues. This week's Quincy Board of License Commissioners meeting at 7 o'clock on Channel 9. 7.30, brand new State View with State Representative Tacky Chan. Meet the Artist, Episode 2, tonight at 8. At 8.30, a media advisory all about the Good Neighbor Energy Fund celebrating its 35th anniversary this year. Find out what's happening at your library for the rest of November at 9 o'clock. Welcome to At Your Library. You can get a complete program schedule on our website, which is qatv.org. When you get there, obviously, click on Program Schedule. And do please like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and see our weekly ad in the Quincy Sun. Coming up, we'll take a look at just a few of the current events and activities we're showing on our electronic bulletin board on Channel 8 for your information. Stay with us. We're back with you in just one minute.
Welcome back. Here is a check of some of the current events and activities featured right now in our electronic bulletin board on Channel 8 for your information. Today is the final day of the season for the Quincy Farmers Market at Pageant Field. They're there from 1130 to 5, but as I mentioned for the first time, the market will have a winter market inside the YMCA. Fridays from 1130 to 3, starting December 6th through February the 14th. The Quincy Animal Shelter hosting a craft fair tomorrow at the Kennedy Center. Visit their website, quincyanimalshelter.org, for more information. The Atlantic Clubhouse on Washington Street inviting you to their Winter Holiday Bazaar. This will be on December 7th from 10.30 to 2.30. You'll find arts and crafts. There'll be a cake sale and a whole lot more. Give them a call, 617-770-9660 for all the details. And tickets are on sale for the 22nd annual Feed the Hungry Gala to benefit Interface Social Services of Quincy. It's December 6th at the Granite Links Ballroom up at Quarry Hills. Visit the website on your screen there or just go to interfaithsocialservices.org for all the details. And if you've got an event or an activity you want to promote, visit our website, qatv.org. Download a bulletin board request form. Just fill it out and send it in. We'll put your message up here on Channel 8, too. Coming up, we chat with Al Bina from the Quincy Quarry and Granite Workers Museum about a special event tomorrow. That's next. Welcome back. We're so pleased to welcome back to the program Al Bina from the Quincy Quarry and Granite Workers Museum to get a little update about how the museum's going and especially about an event that's coming up tomorrow. Al, great to see you again. Joe, it's always great to be here. Go ahead, say it. We're chipping away at it in the granite <laughs> business and don't take anything for granted. <laughs> Thank you. You've made my day <laughs> just now. We're all, anything else yeah. is gravy <laughs> after that. Uh, you know, folks might wonder, what is the Quincy Quarry and Granite Workers Museum? Uh, it started out as an idea, basically. It's just a, a wisp in the air, and it's turned into a concrete location with real membership and real activities. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like I say, it started out uh, as just an idea here. No one was saving the history of the granite industry here in Quincy. And right. Myself and a few other guys, uh, Tom Bonomi, who I, I call him our uh, historian, mm -hmm. we got together and we started this. And we've got a little mini museum now up on Rashuti Drive. Yep. Um, we've got a lot of artifacts in a little bit of area. Uh, but you got to show people you're doing something. You know what I mean? You're doing, you're saving this history. How long has it been now? We've had the museum up about two and a half years now. Okay. We built it about two and a half years ago. Okay. It's a small building. It's up located on Rashuti Drive, off Rashuti Drive on Quarry Hills Drive. Right. <laughs> right below the clubhouse of Granite Links. Now, there was a lot of work to get to this point, though. I oh, mean, yeah. You had the yeah. idea first, yeah. and you had to generate some interest. Then you had to uh, become a nonprofit 501c3 corporation. Correct, yeah. Then you had to raise money, and, right. and you're still doing that. We're still doing that. Um, <laughs> So how long has that been since that first idea was generated? The first idea, it's been about eight years. Okay. Total. Yeah. You know, we first started, we started with actually nothing, zero. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Again, I got to want to thank, uh, put a plug out to the Thomas Green Public Library, which has been great for us because they've had so, they've had so much of a, so many pictures they had that we didn't have. And sure. also the Quincy Historical Society, which, like I say, has helped us right along. We've got a great, great rapport with both of those uh, organizations, basically. Are you pleased with the way it's come so far, Al? I mean, did you, did you think eight years ago that you'd be at this point today? Yeah, I'm waiting for that one million dollar to drop out of the sky. <laughs> 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 Hasn't dropped out yet, Joe. But other uh, than that. Other than that. Yeah. No, I'm pleased. Yeah. You know, like I say, we got a little mini, mini museum. If, if I pass on tomorrow, at least there's something there, and, and there are people that are going to continue it. That's you right. Know, which yeah. is great. We've got some great people that are, you know, on our board of directors, on our trustees. Uh, we've got some great volunteers sure you know? and you've you know you've brought attention to an industry that might have been forgotten I mean we hear a lot about the shipbuilding industry in Quincy yeah. certainly even more about I don't know Howard Johnson's and Dunkin Donuts than we did about you know the quarry the museum yeah, yeah, yeah the and, and again the grand industry was the major industry here at the turn of the century right the, the amazing thing is as we study the history of it and we learn the history of it is the interesting part is the immigrants the wave of immigrants mm -hmm. that have brought to Quincy and the way they settled in Quincy, in little 
enclaves yeah. all around the city, you know, the Scots, the Irish, the Italians, the Germans. Yeah. Uh, it, that, that, that's really part of the interesting history of uh, the granite industry in Quincy. Has it, have you found that it has brought the families of, of those you know, original founders, settlers of that industry together, you know, today's families? I mean, have they kind of formed a, a kind of a socialized group? Well, I think, you know, Quincy is so diverse yeah. today. You don't really have that um, stone workers guild, if deal, you will. Right, yeah. 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 That's true. Because it's, a, it's an industry that's gone in here in Quincy, yeah. you know, so you really don't have that cohesive group of people, you yeah. know. You had a lot of uh, relatives. Mm -hmm. and, you know. Sure. Probably but had things in the basement of the attic and the sheds they didn't know what to do with that their, that their ancestors used, you know, oh, yeah. and wondered yeah. what to do with them. Now there's a place. Again, that's where we acquired a lot of our artifacts. Sure. It's actually from people that have donated them. Said, my, gee, my grandfather's toolbox is down the cellar. Yep. It's been down there for 60 years. Yes. Are you interested in it? We're always interested in getting any kind of historical artifacts related to the granite industry. Okay. Well, I mean, in fact, the Department of Conservation and Recreation has taken notice of the Quincy Quarry and Granite Workers Museum and has teamed up with you for an event tomorrow. Yes, yeah. yes. It, it's great to, uh, you know, team up with the DCR. DCR actually owns most of the quarry property up in that area now. Okay. So when we have to do anything on DCR property, the, the the drawback for us is we've need, we need $1 million liability insurance, a minimum. I see. Which is kind of expensive and we don't have right now. So when we partner with the DCR, it, come up, it comes under their umbrella. Okay. So we don't need that insurance okay. because they, they have the, uh, that insurance. Well, that's a huge so. help. That's yeah, good. oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what's going on tomorrow? Tomorrow we got a uh, uh, quarry walk. Um, it's, uh, it's really not a quarry walk. It's, it's a quarry of uh, history presentation by the DCR and by also the Quarry Museum. Mm -hmm. Usually we, when we say a quarry walk, we take people around the quarry edge, we walk them around, we show them historical pictures. This time of year is very, very difficult. You've got a wet situation, yeah. you've got wet leaves, and we wouldn't want anybody falling into one of the quarries. Uh, so we kind of concentrate on the granite rail quarry, the inside of the quarry itself, where it's been filled already, DCR has filled it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the DCI will actually put on uh, a program, uh, Maggie Brown, who's the head ranger in the Blue Hills Division here. She's going to put an introduction on, you know, how it evolved, how the actual uh, DCR purchased the land, mm -hmm. got the land. Oh, okay. And also filled it with the big dig dirt. Yes. The granite rail quarry. Yeah. She'll cover all of that history. And then we'll, Tom and I, Tom Bonomi and I, who is our historian, will kind of cover some of the history of the quarry. Okay. And Les Tarala, who's yep. a registered geologist, was Les is always interested. Uh, he's going to give a little geology presentation on basically how that granite got there. Okay. How it got the Quincy. Okay, good. This is 10 to noon tomorrow. Um, it's free, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Yep. And anybody can show up? Yep. And all our activities are always free. Yeah. Which is great. Wow. And just park right there at, at the, uh, the cutout off of Rashuti Drive? Off Rashuti Drive, okay. yes. Yeah, there'll be there's a, plenty of parking. If you can't park in a parking lot along the side of the street, there's plenty of parking yep. area. Okay, very good. Yep. It's my favorite time of the show, yeah. Al. It's, <laughs> it's show and tell time. Show and tell time. You brought yes. a whole bunch of pictures with you again today. Yes, yeah. yes. Let's, yeah. let's take a look at, uh, well, let's take a look at how it, how it started. How it started. <laughs> many, yeah. many years yeah. ago. Now, this is a picture of, uh, this is back at the turn of the century, yeah. actually, the Granite Rail Quarry when they were actually working the yeah. quarry. The Granite Rail Quarry was almost 300 feet deep. It was almost as deep as the Swingles Quarry ended up. But they took a lot of granite out of that, and it went to many, many buildings throughout Boston and throughout the nation. Next photo. Next shot. Again, this was the draining of the quarry. Yes. When the DCR, when the, uh, DCR decided they want to fill the quarry, and Big Dig Dirt was yep. they had need some place to dump it. This was the draining of the actual quarry, because they had to drain it before they actually filled it with this historic fill from the Big Dig. Sure. Much to the chagrin of uh, local youth who used to dive and swim there for years and years and years. Right. Yeah. I, you know, I, again, as far as the Quarry Museum, we, we would like to see the quarry remain there. Well, obviously, yeah. But a safety fact is, yeah. and there were so many drownings and accidents yep. up there, they basically they had, to be, they had to be filled. Sure. But, I mean, the result was something right here that you, you can certainly use. Take a look at the before yeah. and after, yeah. Yeah, this is the before and the after. This is a shot of the quarry before. 
The Grand Royal Quarry was one of the best swimming quarries around. Yeah. It was the water was crystal clear, as you can almost see in this picture here. Right. And then the other lower picture is actually after it's filled. The mm -hmm. DCR did a great job, and the, the mitigation was to make it into a park. Right. And it really did. It, it opened up a whole new venue of recreation from swimming to rock climbing. Rock right? climbing, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing. And also graffiti. Well, that too, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, graffiti, it's really, uh, you almost got to con consider it artistic work. If you go up there and you view this graffiti along the Granite Rail Quarry, it's, you got to appreciate graffiti as art, mm. really. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you got to you know just the spectacle just of it itself right to be itself, able to take yeah. a can of spray paint and make something that you can at least recognize yeah, and yeah. read there you know yeah. regardless of what you think of the content right. uh, or the uh, the motive behind it if you will as you can see this climbing but yeah. th th it's actually illegal to do that on DCR property oh but interesting th there's no um, oh I didn't know that <laughs> there's no way to really police that yeah. you know what i mean the DCR has got limited funds uh, uh, like i say so this is what you end up. But I mean, it, it, it's kind of like beautiful art, really. Uh, I know there was some discussion about should we remove the graffiti? Should we, should we paint over it? The decision right. really was made to, to allow it as part of the history of the area, of, right? Of the area, yeah. yeah. The climbers don't like it because it makes the rocks much more slippery. Oh, interesting. You know okay. what I mean? So they're not really enthused about graffiti. But yeah. again, I guess this is part of the history of the granite industry here in Quincy. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Let's take a look at the next one. Yeah. Again, this is another shot of, of some of the graffiti that's located all around the granite real quarry. Kind of a wider it's, shot it's, there, yeah. It's a wider shot. Uh, on all sides, it's, it's completely covered with graffiti. Some of it is profane, yeah. but um, you just kind of overlook that. And I know people go up there and they, they add one letter to a word and it changes the whole word. <laughs> so I know that's been done many times yeah. up there, you know. I'm curious, I wonder what, you know, uh, granite workers would have thought uh, about that, you know, <laughs> years ago, because this was their commodity. commodity I mean, they were selling, yeah. the, they had to be pristine. Right, you know, yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, They wouldn't have definitely appreciated this. Yeah, you know, exactly. Uh, it's funny how it's taken on a whole new meaning. And again, this is Les Tarala. He's the registered geologist. He's Kay. also a member of our uh, the Quarry Museum. And okay. He's a very, very interesting geologist. I mean, if you want to learn about how that granite got here, how it was, how it was made millions and millions and millions of years ago, and how it actually got here wow. millions of years ago, it's really interesting. He puts on a really interesting presentation. Okay. And again, that's tomorrow. From tomorrow, from yes. Yep. He'll be yeah. part of the uh, presentation. Nice. Again, this is just a little... Uh, our stone splitting area up at the up the actual museum at the Little Lions Turning Mill, mm -hmm. and we're going to invite the people after we visited the quarry. We're going to invite them up to the museum. The museum will be open, and we're going to have a little stone splitting demonstration oh, up at the museum. Okay. So this okay. is part of the actually the tour. Yeah. Called the tour. If anybody wants to come up, they can come up after. I know we have some pictures of folks actually splitting stone. Actually here. splitting yeah. stone. We let people actually split the stone, put yep. the feather wedges in, and actually split the stone. The old, the old school way, right? The old school way. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. A better look at that. Uh, you yeah. put those even, wedges even, in. Even some of the young ladies. Uh, sure. We had. Yeah. Yeah. Were there any female granite workers back in the day, Al? Do you know? The only female granite workers that we've been able to um, almost document is ones that worked in the office. Oh, okay. You know what I yep. mean? They were office, kind of office staff. Gotcha. But some of them had a, you know, had a uh, important role in actually running of the quarry. So sure. Yeah, you gotta, not, paperwork's got to be right, right no matter uh, how good the There wasn't is. any quarry workers that we've come across that were women yet. Okay. And here's the inside of the museum, right? Here's one of the shots of yeah. the inside of the museum, some of the artifacts and... Uh, the different uh, pictures, start of, all, out of, all our pictures have got uh, interpretive information with them, you know. So sure. You can, spend, you can spend that 15 minutes there, you can spend hours there. Yeah. So it all depends on how much you want to absorb. Yep. Yeah. And I know that you will, um, for, for different groups, you'll schedule uh, an actual personal tour of the museum for oh, them, yes, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. We're open. So, uh, anybody let us know. We'll do it as an individual. If you want an individual oh, okay. would like to tour. In fact, uh, just this week we've had, uh, we had, we um, had, Science teachers. Uh -huh. We took a, a tour of science teachers through the museum and through the turning mill. We were very interested in it. Okay. Yeah. There you go. The more people that know, the better, the better you it are. is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, QuincyQuarryMuseum.org is your website, I yes. know. Yes. Um, and uh, or just give you a call and uh, and find out more about give it. Give us a call. Yep. We're on the website. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're just about every place. All right. Al. 
Great to see you. Joe, thank you. Go ahead. It's always a pleasure to be here. One more time. We're chipping away at it. <laughs> <laughs> but don't take it for granted. <laughs> Thanks, Al. And uh, happy Thanksgiving to you and everybody at the uh, museum as well. And your family, too. Thank you yes. very much. Just enough time to recap the forecast for you for the rest of the day. Today, kind of uh, windy, warm, and wet out there. Temperatures are climbing to the mid to upper 50s with showers rolling in this afternoon. A quick cool down tonight, though. Down to the uh, lower 30s. Might drop below freezing tonight. Nice tomorrow with sunshine around 50. More rain on Sunday and partly sunny 50 for Monday. Thanks again to Albina from the Quincy Quarry Granite Workers Museum. Thank, Thank you, Joe. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. Monday at 1130, folks from the Quincy Symphony Orchestra here on another edition of Currently in Quincy. We will see you then.